Hey everybody, I'm Ivonix, and this is the Town of Light. We just wrote a letter to our mum, and now we need to go figure out where to put it. Which I'm assuming will be... I don't know. It's a mail room or something. Probably. The letters were sent to the Archive. It was their job to send them. Okay, patient, 12 patient storeroom and Archive. All the way down to the other side of the building. When you were sent to a lunatic asylum, you lost the right to possess anything. Everything you arrived with was packed up and stored here, even the clothes you were wearing. In case you were released one day, too many, however, never left. I'm not gonna be able to, uh, get my stuff. Keys? There's always keys lying around here, but I can't, I can never take any of them. I guess probably needs to go in one of these drawers. RST. T for an AT. Is this it? Oh, here Dear we go. Mother, please, I beg you, get me out of this place. It frightens me so much. You were right. I know I was wrong. I realize I'm so ashamed. If you only knew how much. But now I'll behave well. Sure, so... now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. This is the letter I just wrote. Oh, but it's not filled. This letter. It was Renee's letter. Just like when it was written. But it was never sent. Why? Why did a thing like that happen? Beats the hell out of me. What does this one say? I've received your letter, Mum. You tell me to be patient and strong while I only have fear and pain. And you no longer write to me. If only these lines could be my soul and tell you what's happening to me. The kids want to kill me. They all look the other way and they tell me what I must do. I don't understand. She helps me, but what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. Not fulfilled. Once again. Some reason they were not sending the letters. Oh, and that says not delivered. I'm guessing this Monte is... Fascoli, 7th July, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You haven't even dropped me a line for months. Unfortunately, I can't afford to come and visit you. I've no money for the fare. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be coming to Volterra on business. I've asked him if would be kind enough to ask the director to have I'm news about you. I hope bit. when he comes back, he'll be able to give me good news. But write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to excuse me. I didn't realize. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, daughter. Things will be fine. You'll see. Mom. They never said they they never gave it to her. Not delivered once again. Montefoscoli, twelfth october nineteen forty. Dear daughter, I've written two letters to you and have received no reply. I await a letter anxiously every day. Mr Onofrio has come back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he didn't manage to speak to the director, but he did see you. I pray for you every day. Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. That was lovely, wasn't it? I've made up my mind, Renee. I'm going to bring you home. I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. At the moment, I'm not well and can't work, but I'll soon get better. You'll see as soon as I'm up to making the journey, I'll come and get you. I know you're suffering a lot, but bear up, I beg you. Was going to come get Mom will come to pick us up, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. 
She also sent us the doll. I could have played with it and talked to it, waiting for her to come. But Renee never brought it with her. Perhaps she has been kidnapped like all the others and will be locked up here somewhere. Okay. Uh, oh, this is the, where all those pe the patient stuff is stored. It's probably maybe in here. Convenient camera pan. <laughs> Do I have to move the ladder? Oh, yay! Oh, Renee T. What a surprise. Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. Specifically, this table. Okay, what's... Oh, there's the doll. See, Mom was good. I was oh. bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. Definitely not as nice a doll as Charlotte. May the Lord guide your path and keep you away from sin. Mom. What is that supposed to be? Renee and her mother. Jeez. What's this? Renee. Oh, some kind of religious amulet. Oh, I'm guessing that's also Renee. Okay, now what do we have to go back and do we have to go back to Charlotte now? That's what she just said, so Let's look for Charlotte. We have abandoned her. Have she will always remain where we abandoned her. Beneath the hot lights. We haven't abandoned her. We just left her under the under the warm surgical lights. See, she's nice and warm. She's Ta-da! I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Charlie has gone away. I didn't do this now. I only obeyed orders. Leave us alone. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us now. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Even though we're bad. Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. I gone away. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us now. She loves us, even though we're bad. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders.
famous and like in popular culture, electroconvulsive therapy kind of gets a worse rap than is deserved because it actually is still used today and it is actually helpful to some people. I mean, that's not to defend <laughs> how awful asylums were or anything, but um, but also a side effect of um, a side effect of it is memory loss. So maybe that's supposed to tie in somehow with um, why she can't remember anything. But I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we found the next part of the medical record. I'm guessing. Seventh September, nineteen thirty-eight. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all the other filth. Crazed, she hears voices. They order her about. She says she heard children singing. They were imprisoned in a school. 20th January, 1939. Mutistic, groggy, pays no attention to anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. 1st June. Apathetic, eats very little. She refuses to be touched. Doesn't respond. Passes her time in the park. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. 14 October. Impulsive once again. This morning, she asked for two eggs to make salvoglioni, but the moment she was given them, she threw them away. Excited, uproarious, slightly confused. She strips off. 8th December. Tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words, laughs hysterically, masturbates. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They report that when they took her away she swore at them and then hit out at them and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. Since then they've kept her tied to the bed transferred to the semi-agitated ward, from the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories terrify me. They're not real, are they? You know, it's like, the more as this game goes on, I, I, the more it's like, becoming pretty obvious that Renee is an unreliable narrator. starting to think that maybe Amara was just, you know, it's just like an invention of hers. Like a, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 15th December. Dr. C. Patient notes. The abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. A fickle and flighty character, she abandons her household duties at intervals and dabbles in occasional prostitution. Delinquency? Maybe I answered someone back rudely, yeah, at times they get on my nerves, but delinquency? And the prostitution? No, why? Why say a thing like that? The old doctor tried to understand, but this one just brands you without even understanding. Or even trying to understand. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and vociferous. Treated with cardizol, two injections a week for five weeks. The therapies remove the light for a short while, but also all will, desire, and hope. It was torture, but you couldn't refuse it. No one explained anything to us. No one tried to make us understand. We were like animals on a stock farm. June. 
After a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swore and cursed those who generated her, flailing her arms and hitting out. The patient, according to reports by Dr. B, has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital park. As detailed in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes, ES therapy. Spontaneous abortion? It's not true, I'm certain. How could I have invented things if I didn't even know what they were doing to me? And the stranger in the park? I don't remember. Was it another invention? Or another memory removed? God, my head! Oh, that's what, um... I'm betting the stranger in the park, I'm betting that's the, uh, like, when we walked into the greenhouse. And I saw that little, you know, that brief flashback of, uh, what I'm guessing was Renee and that man. I'm, I bet that's, that was her with the stranger in the park. Thirteenth June. The nurses report that after having received her mother's letter, she fell into a state of great mental confusion. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious, and she punched a nurse. Impulsive lashes about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence so as not to give the patient further reasons to become agitated. 20th August, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient becomes highly agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Even two days later, she still shouts ceaselessly that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. Calm down, you've got to be calm. Don't get agitated, we'll make you calm down. That's the only thing that matters. Is tranquility worth the price of not living? Alert, correct attitude, replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Amara invented by me? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She must have left traces somewhere. Yeah, that's... That's what I was starting to think, is that maybe, along with a lot of other things, I mean... What the hell is that? Maybe Amara wasn't actually real. But I guess the only way we'll find out is, uh... With whether or not we can find evidence of her existence, so... We will go look for said evidence or lack of of in the next video. So I'm going to end this one here for now. So, um, thanks for watching. And